retired Marine and uh, retired Navy pilot. I grew up in Boston with, uh, we were talking about, uh, talking with our friend here from Korea. My brother was in Korea the same time he was in Incheon. And uh, he mentioned Ted Williams and I, I started telling him I grew up uh, right near Fenway Park. And I remember as a, when I was in high school, I remember sitting out in the left field and watching Ted Williams play. He just uh, was always my hero. Uh, he got, uh, you know, one of the greatest baseball players of all time, of course. I think he's the only 400 hitter ever. Do you even tell him about the Marine when he was yeah, the Marine? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, uh, what's your name? Uh, your first Jim, name? Jim Meyer. Jim, Jim. Jim was talking about he had uh, met uh, uh, Ted Williams over in Korea in the DMF squadron, and I, I thought, wow, I couldn't believe it, but it brought back memories. Uh, I got a picture from the Boston Globe. It was on the front page when Ted Williams was uh, shot up. He's flying uh, F4U Corsairs for the Marine Corps. And I uh, got shot up, and uh, they had a picture of the plane there with bullet holes through the wings and everything. But he came back after the war, after Korea, and uh, of course played for uh, for uh, uh, the Boston Red Sox, and then retired from the Sox. I got a program from the last game he played. He played. But he was a great game. fly fisherman. He actually retired yeah, and went he to. Yeah, loved to fly fish. Yeah, and he was. Uh, in fact, he did some. Uh, it was that great. Uh, he he did some TV with. Uh, I forget what the guy's name was. Had TV shows on Harold, fishing. Harold Ensley. Harold Ensley's Friends was the name of the game. Unbelievable. The memory of this guy is un, un, unreal. But yeah, he was uh, just a great guy. He was very, very subdued. He never really was uh, flashy with the media and what have you. But uh, he was a great guy. Unfortunately, when he died, he uh, his uh, his family wanted to uh, cryo freeze him and. Uh, yeah. Uh, his brain. Yeah, I, I think they may have. I think he may still be frozen. Uh, I'll have to look that up. But uh, just uh, a lot of memories coming back from talking to Jim here from uh, from the early days in the Marine Corps. And, uh, pretty special, pretty special meeting this guy. Part of my job, Dean, was uh, in the morning we'd get it up at five o'clock and I'd pull a chuck cell uh, when they'd take off. Uh, yeah. We had an accident or something and I used to have bad memories. One Marine got his head cut off by a prop. Oh, a prop. He still had his fatigue hat on. That head rolled right up on the oh. yeah. Uh, I used to have bad dreams for months. I think so. We had a psychiatrist and things. Yeah, and I, they, I can believe that. They got me straight. And I didn't, I didn't tell, tell us about your encounter with Ted Williams. Oh, yeah. Ted Williams uh, was at VMF 121, MAG 12. Marine Air Group 12, Marine Fighter Squadron 121. I was the base leader chief. Uh, I, that was when I was pulling chocks out of the planes. I didn't get to shake hands or talk to him, but I saw uh, he was called a splendid splitter. Yeah. Uh, that was his nickname. Uh, 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 and the top 10% of NASCAD cadets get the choice of being Marine pilots, so they, they got the very best. And the same in Annapolis, the Naval Academy, the top 10% get to become Marine officers. Two old soldiers, I salute you both. I <laughs> appreciate that. Thank God you. Bless. Thank you very much.